السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Inshallah, today we will be uh, starting with the hadith number uh, 31, in which an Abi Al Abbas Sahl ibn Sa'id ibn Sa'id ibn Sa'id رضي الله عنه قال جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله دلني على عمل إذا عملته أحبني الله وأحبني الناس قال ازهد في الدنيا يحبك الله وازهد في ما عند الناس يحبك الناس So uh, Abil Abbas Sahl ibn Sa'd ibn Sa'idi رضي الله عنه uh, reported that a man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and said to him O oh, Messenger of Allah Guide me to such an action, which if I do, Allah will love me, and people will also love me. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, answered him, and he said, have no desire for this world, Allah will love you. And have no desire for what people possess, and the people will love you. So uh, when, when we detach uh, ourselves from the worldly life, when we renounce the worldly life, Allah will love us. And what does this mean that we have to be poor? No. Does this mean that we have to ask people? No. So when we renounce the worldly life, Allah will love us. And when we detach ourselves from what people possess, people will love us. How, how does this work? The word, the Arabic word for zuhd means asceticism. It does not mean to renounce oneself from the, the, this life. It does not mean to live poorly. It means to have the worldly life in our pockets, but not in our hearts. Because once we have we have the, the wealth in our heart, then we do we do not spend it. Because we we will think it will finish or it will decrease. So when we have this wealth in our pockets then it means we are not attached to it and we do not love it. And this encourages us to spend it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any fears that it will finish, that it will decrease. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us uh, uh, that whoever spends for his sake, then he will multiply the rewards for him. And there are so many hadith that indicate this also. So the Quran mentions it, the hadith mentions it, that uh, spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, is going to be rewarded multiple folds tenfolds or even more. So imagine you are spending $5 for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is giving you 50 
fifty dollars uh, uh, instead, ten folds. So when we die, we are not going to take anything with us. No wealth, nothing, no money, nothing. So we are leaving everything behind. And this is enough reason to make us understand that our hearts should not get attached with, with anything in this dunya because we are leaving everything behind us. Al-Fudayr ibn Iyad radiallahu anhu said, the essence of asceticism is being content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us. And of course, this does not mean only wealth, it, it means health, it means knowledge, it means everything that we might have. And whatever he deprives us from is also, we have to be content with that. So if someone is a real believer, he would know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he prevents something. So his prevention is a real giving for us. When Allah gives, he knows what's good for us. And when he deprives us from anything, he also knows what's bad for us. So whether he gives us or whether he deprives us is the best for us. We might not see the difference. And so many times we ask Allah and we make dua that we want this thing, Ya Allah, to happen. We want it to happen. And when it happens, we would say, oh, we wish it did not happen. But if it did not happen, then we would think, why, why we did not get it? There is no why. We have to be content with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees. So content is asceticism. And it's full with certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means fully entrusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all our affairs, with all our matters. So in this hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to look up and to ponder upon the reality of this lowly life. The dunya should not be our biggest concern. This life should not deceive us, should not take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, should not uh, take us away from the right path. This dunya will vanish one day and we will be left only with our deeds. We're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking with us only our deeds. What have we done in this dunya? One of the companions says, Today, we, we do a lot of things. We are not rewarded, we are not punished. But in the day after, there won't be any, any, anything to do. Our deeds will be scaled. فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ So whoever finds good, then he should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever finds other than that, وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكْ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَهِ He should not blame anyone except himself. Because he deviated from the right path. He did not follow the orders. He did not accept the right path 
that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, has chosen. So this dunya should not deceive us. It will vanish one day. And we will be left with our deeds only. Allah puts us in this, on this earth so that he may test us. We all have tests in this dunya. And at the end of the test, there is always someone who passes the test or someone who fails it. So we want to be of those who are winners at the end. We want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is content with us. This is our goal in this life. It's not the dunya, it's not the wealth, it's not the money. It's our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's our holding to the rope that we have in our hands. This rope is the rope of Quran and the rope of the hadith and the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu We have to hold tight to it. There are so many tests around us. So many arrows are headed towards us. We can see that in, in, uh, in our daily lives. Go to schools and see what the, the, the information or the ideas that are implemented in the heart, in the, in the minds of our children. We have to be careful. We have to reverse these, these ideas. So our goal is to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is content with us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi said, whoever makes dunya his preoccupation, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place his poverty in front of his eyes, make his affairs scattered, and nothing of the dunya comes to him except that which, he, which has been decreed for him. Nothing. No matter how hard he works, if that if he did not get anything decreed for him, then it will not happen. And whoever makes the hereafter his preoccupation, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places freedom from what's in his heart. So he gathers his affairs. And dunya comes to him despite being reluctant to do so. So who is that person? That person is the one who accepts what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for him. So we have to understand the purpose of this dunya and that we are here on a test. So we don't want to be attached to, the, to, the, to, this, to this dunya. We want to pass this test. We want to keep our focus on passing this test safely. Also, if we look at the beginning of the hadith, we find that a man came and asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a question. So this hadith is also about seeking knowledge. So we have to seek knowledge. We have to seek knowledge and we, we don't have, we, we don't stop at a cer certain age. 
We don't say, okay, we are 50, we are 60, that's enough. We got uh, the knowledge that we need in this dunya. No, we keep seeking knowledge as long as we are alive. Because the more we learn, the more we find how ignorant we are. We know nothing. There's so many things that we have to learn. And we cannot master everything. But we have to learn. We have to keep learning. As long as we are living, we have to keep learning. We have to, to learn and we have to know what to learn. We have to know to learn about good and beneficial things. Things that will make us winners in the day after. So this is uh, just, uh, uh, these are just th some thoughts about uh, this hadith. And we move to the next hadith in which Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is hadith number 32. An Abi Sa'idin Sa'ad ibn Malik ibn Malik ibn Sinan. An Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, la darara wa la dira. So Abi Sa'id, uh, Sa'ad ibn Malik ibn Sinan al-Khudri radiallahu anhu said, that the Prophet of Allah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no injury, there is no harm, nor return of injury, of return of harm. La darara wa la dirar. This hadith is um, an evidence of the miraculous nature of the speech of the Prophet We mentioned this earlier uh, several times that uh, the words of Rasulullah are simple expressions with comprehensive entailment. So this hadith is four or five words, okay? But what the, the uh, so Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used a very short state sentence, a very short sentence, few words only, but it carries deep, 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 and great meanings. There shall now there shall be no harming. So no harming to any individual. If a person did not harm you, you are not, you, you cannot harm him. Even if he harms you, you go to, to people in charge and you tell them, you don't harm anyone. So there shall be no bringing harm to anybody including yourself. So how can you harm yourself? You can harm yourself physically or spiritually. You can harm yourself by being away from the correct path. You can harm yourself by being away from the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. You can harm yourself by being away from the Quran. If you, if you harm an individual due to recklessness, so you are liable to, 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 to pay a compensation for that person or for the family of that person. There is no harm. So harm normally is not repelled by a similar harm. For example, if someone is poor, he cannot gain haram income because he is poor. No, 
there is no harm, no injustice, no uh, no uh, daral for anyone. So if something is harming you, as we said, it, it does not justify that you can harm him. You have to go to authorities, you have to go to, uh, to the judge, and that person will get you right from, from this, uh, uh, this person who harmed you. So there are different examples. If you are building a house, uh, you have to focus on not harming any of the neighbors. And you cannot uh, build your home uh, immediately next to theirs and you, you, you cannot block their views, you cannot block the, the, the light that comes into their house. There are, there are rules for, for doing it. So you do not harm people. And we have always to understand that our freedom ends when others are being harmed. We cannot say, oh, I can do anything I want. No, there are rules. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us not to, harm, not to harm ourselves, nor any other person. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to enlighten our path so that we are protected by his divine heart, by his divine care. So, as we just mentioned, darar or harm is of two types. It's not only physical, but it can be emotional. How can you harm anyone emotionally? By hurting with, with bad words. And sometimes the effect of hearing a bad word is more powerful than uh, a hit with a slash or uh, uh, with, with a stick or something. And for this, we noticed in previous hadiths, which we covered, that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmi al-akhir, fal yaqul khayran aw liyasmut. Whoever believes, whoever has a complete belief in, the, in uh, Allah and in the day of judgment, then he would say good word or he would be silent. He would say good things or don't say anything. So, la barar, la dirar. We do not cause harm to anyone, and no one is, is supposed to harm us. It's a peaceful way of living. Okay, now, uh, inshallah, moving to hadith number. 33 uh, عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لو يعطى الناس بدعواهم لدعى رجال أموال قوم ودماءهم لكن البينة على المدعي واليمين على من أنكر So ابن عباس رضي الله عنه narrated that the Prophet said, were people to be given according to their claims. Some would claim the wealth and the blood of others. But the burden of proof is upon the claimant. And the taking, a taking of an oath is upon the one who denies. Beautiful hadith. So, this is a major hadith in Islamic uh, uh, jurisdiction. Uh, 
and in trying to resolve problems. In societies, there are problems. But Islam did not leave a single thing without covering it. So the Sharia came to protect the wealth, the life, the dignity, and the honor of others. And this hadith indicates the role of Islam that it plays in trying to preserve the rights of others. So this is very related to the previous hadith. This hadith shows the reality of this life and that there are bad people who seek to take people's right. And we just mentioned that this life is not where everyone will live in harmony as there will always be problems. There will always be tests. And the, the results of these tests are winners or losers. So winners are highly compensated in the day after, while losers will realize how they were bad to themselves, how they harmed themselves, how they hurt themselves, and how they mistreated themselves in this dunya, and of course, in Ahira. So their deeds in the dunya led to their misery in the Akhirah. Now, if we look at the Hadith, uh, we, we find that this Hadith derives the principle innocent until proven guilty. So if someone makes a claim against anyone, this person, uh, the, so, so that the, the person uh, is automatically given the benefit of the doubt until that person brings an evidence. So if someone makes a claim against you, you're automatically given the benefit of the doubt that you can say things against him until that person brings evidence. So it's not as a, a, a society of Caius. No, there is order. There is a system. There are rules. So bringing a proof was usually done by bringing witnesses. However, in, in uh, our time, um, many more things can be added to, to, to prove something. Fingerprints, video recordings, camera recordings, DNAs, and a lot, the list goes on. So it's not just claiming something and trying to get it. No, there are rules. So Islamic, the Islamic court of law uh, follows a certain procedure. So claimants uh, make a claim against a defendant. And when this happens, the judge asks the defendant if the claimant is telling the truth. And of course, if the, if the defendant denies, then the judge goes, uh, asks the claim, claimant uh, for proof. And if, if the uh, claimant has no proof for his allegation, 
then the defendant has to swear an oath that the allegation is not true. Okay. Uh, Subhanallah. Yani, everything is under control. So this preserves the rights of people. Some people whose hearts are attached to this dunya might give a false oath. So they would swear, but they know themselves that they are lying. And they know that they are not truthful. Yet, they make that oath. And for those, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, لا يؤاخذكم الله باللغو في أيمانكم ولكن يؤاخذكم بما عقدتم الأيمان Allah will not impose blame upon you for what is meaningless in your oath. But he will impose blame upon you for what you intend, for what you intended of oaths. Never swear on something that you know you are not 100% clear or sure about it. But there are people who may refuse to make an oath, even though they are telling the truth, because they don't want to bring Allah's name in a petty matter. Allah's name is so magnificent, so great. We don't, we don't just throw oaths here and there. There's so many people who would say, Wallahi, we did this. Wallahi, we did that. Wallahi. Do not many make oaths. So from this hadith, we realize that Islam did not come for spirituality only, but it also came to solve man's problems in this life. So if there is any, uh, any issue between people, uh, there are rules to solve these issues. But always remember, never lie in a court of law. Never give false testimony uh, uh, because this is a major thing. You know that the court of law in this dunya is nothing compared to the court of law in the day after. In the day after, we will all be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will be asking us about every single thing, every single word that we have said. Everything is recorded. Long records. Long records. So we have to be careful. We have to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always overwatching us. And all our deeds are being recorded for us. Everything we, we do in this dunya will be scaled in the day after. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to make us content with, with uh, uh, whatever he gives us, with whatever he deprives us, with everything that we have. Ya Rabbana lak alhamdu wa shukru wa ni'mata wa rida. Ya Rabbana lak alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wa jika wa azim sultanik. And until we meet next week, inshallah, I would I would leave you 
by sending your salam and uh, my salam and salawat to our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.